What's up, I'm Ijema and welcome back to my channel. A couple good signs to know whether your code is clear or not is if it's declarative or even if it introduces little to no repetitive logic. There are many different methodologies, concepts, and tools that you can use to help make your code more clean, but one concept that we're gonna be talking about in this video is higher order functions. Although the name sounds pretty technical, higher order functions are a lot more simple and prevalent than you think. In fact, if you've ever used the array methods like map and filter, you have experience using higher order functions. So in this video, we're gonna be breaking down higher order functions by understanding what they are, why it's important, important to know what they are and how to use them properly in your applications. So by the end of this video, you should be able to take advantage of higher order functions in such a way that you can write more declarative, easy to read, and clean code. So first things first, let's define the term higher order function. A function that's classified to be higher order has at least one of the two following properties. So the first property is when a function takes in another function as one of its arguments. And then the second property is when that function can return another function. So one of the most important things to understand about higher order functions is that they aim to abstract away as much logic as possible. Abstracting away logic is just another great approach to reducing the amount of repetitive code in your applications. So now that we have a nice working definition of higher order functions, let's take a look at a couple examples of the function type. So here I have a simple method called greeting that takes in no parameters and it returns the string howdy. And then right below that, I have another method called print function call. This method only takes in one argument, which is called fn in this case. And what I'm returning out is the console log, which is actually printing out the function call. So when I execute my print function call and pass in a reference to my greeting method, I'll see in my console that howdy has been printed out. So in this example, print function call is a higher order function since it takes in the function fn as an argument. So one important thing to notice about print function call is that it has no clue what's inside of the greeting method. All it's told to do is just execute it. So with that example, we took a look at a higher order function that takes in another method as an argument. So with this example, we're gonna look at a higher order function that returns another method. So I create a constant called num with the value 100, and then right below that, I have a method called generate function, which is actually my higher order function since it returns a method. When I call generate function, I get back another method, which when called again, returns the provided value 100. So the concept of a higher order function isn't common throughout all modern programming languages. We're able to take advantage of higher order functions inside of JavaScript because the programming language treats functions just like any other value. So the same way that a string, a number, or an array is a regular value, a reference to a function is also a value. So here we can see in this code block, I have my constant name assigned to the value eGemma. And then right below that, I have another constant called age, which is assigned the value of 50. Say greeting is doing the same thing where the value that's being assigned to it is an anonymous arrow function that returns the string howdy. Okay, so far, so good. Now we're getting a better understanding of what higher order functions look like. But now we have to start asking the most important question of why. Why do they exist? And why is it important for us to know what they are and know how to use them? So as I mentioned before, the name of the game with higher order functions is to abstract away as much logic as possible. If you can abstract away logic in your application, you're reducing the probability of introducing repetitive logic in your app. And reducing a lot of repetitive code can make your application a lot easier to read and to debug. But now you might be thinking to yourself, what does abstract away logic actually mean? So to be a little bit more concrete about this explanation, let's walk through a series of code blocks to get a better understanding. So here I have an array named people that contains an array of objects. Each object has a name and age key. Below that, I create a new function called getAges that takes an array, gets the age of each element in the array, and pushes it to the final array, which gets returned at the end of our method call. So nothing out of the ordinary here. We have a method that is executing some hard-coded logic. So now that we've seen that, let's take a look at another code block that is executing fairly similar logic. So in this case, I have another method called getNames, which is instead of returning a new array that only contains the ages from people, it's now gonna return an array that only contains the names from people. So again, we have a method that is executing some provided logic. So now you might be wondering what exactly is the problem here? One thing that I'm noticing from these two code blocks is that regardless of the logic that's being executed within each step of our for loop, we're repeating the action of executing a for loop. Our two methods, getAges and getNames, are both associated with the same array and performing the same essential action of iterating over that array. So even though we aren't duplicating the values returned from each of these methods, we are duplicating the logic of iterating over these arrays. So since we are repeating ourselves and creating repetitive code, we want to abstract away this logic. 
And the way that we would want to abstract away this logic is introduce the use of higher order functions. So if we think about it at a high level, we can create a function, which is gonna be our higher order function. This higher order function is gonna take in a method as one of its arguments. And then our higher order function now has two responsibilities. It has the responsibility of iterating over the specified array and then calling the provided method at each step of the iteration. So chances are this function might have sounded pretty familiar to you because I actually described the whole purpose of the array map method. The array map method takes in one argument which is expected to be a function. That function is gonna get called at each step of iterating over the specified array. So the next code block that we'll be taking a look at is gonna be a custom implementation of the array map method. Okay, so here I have my map method that's taking in two arguments. So the first argument is array, which we'll be iterating over. And the second argument is method, where method is the function that's going to be called at each step of our internal for loop. So inside of my map method, I create a constant called final array, which is equal to an empty array. And then right below that, I have a for loop that is iterating over my provided array. Here you can see that we push the final return value from method into our final array for each step of the for loop. And then we'll return final array at the end of map. That's all there is to the array map method. So let's take a closer look at how we can take advantage of this new higher order function. I repurpose our original get age and get name methods so that they now only expect to take in one argument, which is the current element during the iteration inside of our map method. So if we take a look at this section of our code block, notice how I'm passing in the reference of the methods get age and get name instead of calling them with the parentheses. Us having the ability to pass in the variables get age and get name, which are actually assigned the value of anonymous arrow functions, serve as a great reminder that functions are regular values just like strings or numbers. So the map method that we just defined is a higher order function because we take in a method as an argument, and then we're able to call that method inside of our for loop. Our map function has no clue what method is supposed to do. All map is told to do is just call method and then push the return value from that function into final array. So we can pass in references to functions that will then get called at each step of our map iteration, but there's another syntactic approach that we can take to have the same outcome. So in this next code block, I'm gonna be showing you how you can do in place callbacks. So here I have my map method, which takes in people. And the second argument is actually just the value of my function. So instead of passing in get age, I'm just passing in the value that was assigned to get age. And then I'm able to do the same thing with person's name. What I'm doing here is something similar to this. So instead of passing the value of the method that will get called inside a map, we are defining the value in place where the second argument is. So this has been a practical introduction to higher order functions. They can definitely become a lot more complex depending on what they're supposed to be doing in certain applications. But in this video, I wanted to share with you the basics of higher order functions so you can start taking advantage of them in your projects today. If you enjoyed me re-implementing the map method, I can probably make another video where I cover re-implementing other popular higher order functions like filter or reduce. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, you can drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm also on Twitter where I talk about a variety of things. If you want to reach out and have a chat, send me a DM. And with that, I'll see y'all in the next one.